up until this point, you have learned and performed the first three phases of the accounting process, namely recording, classifying, and summarizing. In this lecture series, you will learn about the last phase, interpreting, which is the evaluation or analysis of the financial statements. Hence, the title of this series, Financial Statements Analysis, which consists of the assessment of a firm's past performance, present condition, and future potentials. Through financial statements analysis, stakeholders or the users of accounting information are able to determine an entity's profitability, liquidity, or its ability to pay short-term obligations, and solvency, or its ability to meet long-term obligations. In addition, one is able to assess management's effectiveness in running the business, as well as the safety of investment in the firm. There are various tools and methods used in interpreting financial statements, such as analysis of the cash flow statement, of the statement of changes in equity and of the variation in gross profit and net income. However, the just mentioned techniques deserve their own separate lectures. In this video series, we will focus on horizontal analysis, vertical analysis, and financial ratios or ratio analysis. Horizontal analysis evaluates a series of financial data over time. In other words, it involves comparing figures in the financial statements of two or more consecutive periods. The difference between the amounts of the two periods and the percentage change from one period to the next using the earlier period as the base are computed. Horizontal analysis is often described as trend ratios and percentages. Let's have this problem. Given the following accounts, perform horizontal analysis on the statements of financial position of Elizabeth Tailoring Materials Store. Obviously, this is not a formal statement of financial position but only statement of financial position accounts. Therefore, from this information, we must first prepare the entity's statements of financial position or balance sheets as of the years ended December 31, 2021 and 2022 as follows. With the assets section on the one hand, and the liabilities and owner's equity section on the other hand. The liabilities are divided into current and non-current, just like the assets. Of course, by this time, you already know how to prepare this, right? To be able to do a horizontal analysis, we need two additional columns for the increase or decrease in amount and percent. For cash, from the earlier years 850,000 pesos, to the following year's 1,281,600 pesos, there is obviously an increase of how much? The difference between these two figures. And that is 431,600 pesos. Since this is an increase, no open and close parentheses. If there is an increase in terms of amount, then, in terms of percent, there is also an increase, of course. But how many percent is the increase? The amount of increase, which is 431,600, divided by the earlier period's amount, which is 850,000 pesos, then multiplied by 100. 
equals 50.78% rounded off. Okay? Why do we multiply by 100? Because we are computing for the increase or decrease in terms of percent. If we don't multiply by 100, the figure would still be in terms of decimal. That is why to compute for this percent, it's 431,600 divided by 850,000, then multiplied by 100. Or if you prefer, simply 431,600 divided by 850,000. Then move the decimal point two places to the right. Now please be very careful in the amount you use as divisor. In this instance, 850,000, not this 1,281,600 because we have to use the earlier period, in this case, 2021, which is earlier than 2022, as the base. Recall this slide, which we encountered a while ago. The difference between the amounts of the two periods and the percentage change from one period to the next, using the earlier period as base, are computed. That's why, again, to get the increase or decrease in percent, the amount of increase divided by the earlier period's amount, then multiplied by 100. Next, trading securities. From 2021's 420,000 pesos to 2022's higher amount of 880,000, there is an increase or decrease? Increase of 460,000. For the increase in percent, 460,000 divided by what? By 880,000 or by 420,000? 420,000, the amount of the year 2021, which is the earlier period. Then multiplied by 100 equals 109.52%. Next is accounts receivable net. Net meaning the allowance for doubtful accounts has already been deducted from these figures. From the earlier years, 750,000 to 670,000 the following year, there is a decrease this time. The amount became smaller by 80,000 with parentheses. To emphasize decrease. Please don't forget that. That is very important. Decrease of 80,000 or negative 80,000 divided by the earlier year's amount of 750,000 multiplied by 100 equals 1.5 10.67% rounded off. Again, if the amount decreased, then the percent also decreased. So don't forget the parentheses. For merchandise inventory, same procedures. The difference between the two amounts is the increase or decrease in pesos. The amount of increase or decrease divided by the earlier year's amount multiplied by 100 equals the increase or decrease in terms of percent. For prepaid expenses, increase of 90,000 pesos and 32.14%. Now, please listen carefully here. 
How about for the total current assets? We may do the same procedures as we have been doing. Comparing figures horizontally. Anyway, that is why this is known as horizontal analysis. We compare these two figures along a row, which is horizontal. But please know that for the amount, not percent, but amount of the increase or decrease of these total current assets, we may also do it vertically. Meaning, we may add these amounts in this column. What do you call that term again? Which means getting the sum of the amounts or adding all the numbers in a column? I mentioned that in my lecture about chart of accounts, posting to general ledger, and trial balance. What do we call that term? Footing. So we may compute this 651,600 this way. 431,600 plus 460,000 minus 80,000 minus 250,000 plus 90,000. How about for the increase or decrease in percent? Can we also foot or add these figures? No. We can only foot the amount column, not the percent column. That is the reason why, if you notice, these horizontal lines extend only up to this third money column. It does not cover this last column, this column for the percent. Okay, This horizontal line does not extend here. Therefore, we cannot foot these figures to get the percent increase or decrease in total current assets. Meaning, the only way to get the increase or decrease in percent is to divide 651,600 by 3,500,000, then multiply by 100. And that gives us 18.62%. For the non-current assets, we may perform the same procedures we have done before in order to get these figures. For the total non-current assets, same procedures. But again, we can also get this 630,000 by footing or adding these figures. Total assets now. Compare these two figures. There is an increase of 1,281,600. We can check vertically. Total current assets of 651,600 plus total non-current assets of 630,000 equals this same amount of 1,281,600. 1,281,600 divided by 18,300,000 multiplied by 100 equals 7% increase in total assets. For the liabilities and owner's equity section, you should already know how to get the following increases or decreases in amount and percent.
please take note that the increase in total liabilities and owner's equity, both in terms of amount and percent, is the same as the increase in total assets. Because remember, the basic accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus equity. With horizontal analysis, additional information about the business may be obtained, which may point out certain problems or areas for improvement. For instance, the cash increased by 50.78%. That percentage is significant. Does the company really need to have additional cash for its operations? Or is it better to put some cash to work in order to earn more profit? If horizontal analysis compares figures in the financial statements of two or more consecutive periods, vertical analysis involves comparing figures in the financial statements of a single period. It evaluates financial items in relation to a base amount. In the statement of financial position, the base amount is that of the total assets. While in the income statement, the basis is the net sales. Meaning to say, each figure in the statement of financial position is expressed as a percentage of total assets. While in the income statement, every amount is expressed as a percentage of net sales. Vertical analysis is also known as common size statements. Given the following accounts, perform vertical analysis on the income statement of Elizabeth Tailoring Materials Store. Like the previous problem, we are not given a financial statement here but only financial statement accounts, specifically income statement accounts. Therefore, to do the requirement of the problem, we need to prepare the income statement of the business first. This way. For the purpose of performing vertical analysis, we have to provide another column for the percentages. And because this is an income statement, every amount should be expressed as a percentage of net sales. In other words, the net sales is 100%. And every other amount you see here should be divided by this net sales amount of 12,120,000. And then to convert the quotient to decimal, multiply by 100. Or simply move the decimal point two places to the right. So, 12,300,000 divided by 12,120,000 multiplied by 100 equals 101.49%. 180,000 divided by 12,120,000 multiplied by 100 equals... 1.49%. 1,200,000 divided by 12,120,000 multiplied by 100 equals 
3,800,000 divided by 12,120,000 multiplied by 100 equals 31.35%. 5 million divided by 12,120,000 multiplied by 100 equals 41.25%. Nine hundred fifty thousand divided by twelve million one hundred twenty thousand multiplied by one hundred equals seven point eighty four percent. Four million fifty thousand divided by twelve million one hundred twenty thousand multiplied by one hundred equals thirty three point eighty two percent, and so on and so forth. up to this bottom line of the income statement. Now, if you notice, these bars or horizontal lines to emphasize mathematical operations extend up to this last column or percent column. That means we may check our percentages vertically. For instance, 101.49% less 1.49% equals 100%. Nine point ninety per cent add thirty one point thirty five per cent equals forty one point twenty five per cent, and so on and so forth. Keep in mind, however, that because these percentages are not exact but are rounded off there could be differences of 0 0.01 when you check vertically. A case in point is this 41.25% less 7.84% is actually equal to 33.41%. But what we have here is 33.41%. 42%. So there is a difference of 0 0.01. But then that is okay. That is not a problem because that is just due to rounding off. For instance, 12,300,000 divided by 12,120,000 multiplied by 100 is not exactly 101.49%. It's 101.4 something and something and something. Okay, we just rounded off two places after the decimal point. Same with the other percentages here, except for this 100%. Okay, that's why you can expect differences when you check the percentages vertically, at least for some. Now, what can we glean from this common size income statement? For one, 1.49% 1 of the amount of net sales is sales returns and allowances. Another is net income is 13.37% of net sales. Is a specific percentage good enough for the company or not? 
acceptable or not. If not, then it must determine the causes of problems and do something to improve in the future. Now, notice also that this income statement is only for one period for the year 2022. If you are asked to prepare a vertical analysis or common size statement for more than one year or more than one period, you just need to add two columns for each period. One column for amount and another column for percent. 